Welcome to the Airbnb Roundtable. Today is the 15th of September, 2021. If you're doing uh, business taxes, this is the last day to turn them in. And uh, we have uh, Dave Thomas is with us. They're uh, running the uh, Dreamlifter slash Flex Trade Alerts. And Dave, uh, Dave and I and Tim was also on the call as uh, have known each other a long time. You guys live near each other and have coffee a lot, I think, but. We do, we do, as, as a matter of fact. Uh... Uh, Tim, I might be looking to have one after after the meeting here today, if you're that, open. That'd be great. Okay, right. very good. That's a pretty now. Now that I've got my little electric car, it's a it's a place to uh, the Starbucks where we go. It's got a nice little plug in, so it uh, helps pay for the, uh, the 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 Starbucks. All right. Well, um, if you don't know Dave, uh, Dave's been around uh, options trading for a long, long time. Tim too. Uh, the three of us met uh, many years ago in, uh, in another venue, as Dan Harvey mm -hmm. likes to say. <laughs> and uh, we've both done lots, all, all three of us done lots of diff different things. Dave was mentoring for a couple of years with John Locke, and um, he moved over here to do some trade alert services and been tweaking and testing and improving as kind of a process. But uh, you're going to show us today how the flex trade has evolved and where it is today. Absolutely. Um, but before we get too far into it, just a normal disclosure that Airman Corporation is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Options, futures, bonds, and currencies all involve risks and are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, if you want to read the whole thing, um, it'll be on the recording. It's also at the bottom of our web pages. So, um, you know, just pause the recording if you're watching that. So with that, I will stop sharing. So Dave, you can share. Okay. And I see your screen. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, and I think Tom is, um, you know, as questions come in, feel free. Um, I won't be, I won't be monitoring those. Uh, uh, but and if you have questions that come in, you know, just jump in or, yeah, or Tim, Tim, and I, Tim and I can monitor those. I'm going to mute myself. So there's no background uh, noise or anything, but uh, we'll, I don't we'll, think you have any here. problem with that, with that beautiful new microphone you got there, Tom. Yeah, the, uh, this, this, I feel like you're at the, the radio station. Oh yeah, I may start a podcast or something, right? <laughs> the, yeah, that's what it looks like. So, all right. Well, good. Well, thanks, Tom. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. I went back to kind of look at my uh, last time that we did a roundtable on the flex, and it was literally September sixteenth, twenty twenty. So, <laughs> I had to. Uh, it's kind of literally almost right to the day. Um, so, uh, but I just wanted to. Um, uh, you know, just Tom gave me a call and said, hey, I'm probably, it's probably a good chance to, um, you know, now that you got some, you know, a year ago, the only thing we had was back test results. And so, you know, now it's a matter of, you know, live, live results, which kind of is always nice to be able to kind of update people. So um, what I basically put on here is saying, you know, you know, I tried to put in, you know, not knowing what kind of questions would come in I figured, well, let's ask some of the questions right at the top, like, why am I doing this round table today? Well, you know, <laughs> it was, uh, I wasn't initially thinking of it uh, because, you know, sometimes you just get so deep into, you know, everyday trading and uh, between Flex and Dreamlifter. Um, the, just for everyone's perspective is Dreamlifter Trade Alert Service started June 29th of 2020. Uh, we added in the Flex trade um, about four months later, the end of November. And that was kind of Flex 1.0. We switched to Flex 2.0, kind of like in the January, February timeframe. And then Flex 3.0 uh, came right around the end of, or mid, mid April of, uh, of this year. So what I've done is I want to get a chance to kind of update, like I said, with you know, actual live traded uh, results and introduce you know, to uh, potentially new, new potential traders who may want to learn what this service has to offer. And of course, if you have questions during the, the time that we're here, feel free. Um, and like I said, hey, let's um, keep this pretty, pretty casual. And let's, uh, as I say here, you know, let's dig in, have some fun exploring this trade and what's it all about. And, you know, what I've been able to offer to people over the last year, year and a half or so. So, you know, the key things I look at here is people we might want to ask themselves, you know, hey, is this trade alert service and this flex trade for you. Um, you know, how typical things that I'd be looking for is, hey, how has the thing performed since last November? 
you know, what's been the performance of the first two versions? Uh, how's it been doing lately since you've been changing to the Plex 3.0? Um, and matter of fact, why in the world did you even think to change it to 3.0? Uh, did the performance get better? You know, what changed? So I'm just throwing out questions there, which was an easier way for me to kind of put together a presentation because I would always try to figure out if I was the person listening, you know, what do I want to hear? You know, what do I want to understand? So, so I figured, hey, let's review all these issues. We'll, um, uh, we'll do those one by one. Then we'll walk through a, everybody wants to see, you know, okay, let's see what it can do on a, a winning trade day by day. And remember, these trades are only somewhere between three to 10 days. So it won't take that long to actually go through a winning trade. But, you know, just like anything else, this is an Achilles heel to every trade that I've ever been associated with. And so I made sure that I took our absolute worst trade um, during the last year or so and said, well, let's take a quick look at that and let's, you know, see what happened and evaluate it just so everyone's aware, okay, of what can happen. And then we'll also check out, I put here a cool think or swim think script uh, custom graph to help in the constant monitoring of the trade. And uh, we can take a look at that uh, later on, but I think it was, it's one of the, what I view as one of the, you know, these think scripts you can write um, to be able to go and look at information, not just what happened in the past, you know, maybe the past week or two, but once the software is written, you can go back a long time and it really helps in the evaluation process um, of, of creating and, and setting up and monitoring and, and improving a trade. So, so back to the first question, is Flex for you? Okay, well, you know, key thing that you always have to look at, you get to determine if the any trade, Flex trade, I don't care what it is, you know, boxcar trade, road trip trade, you know, I don't care what trade, you know, that you've, that you've been doing, you get to determine if it fits with your trade criteria. You know, does it fit with your personality? Um, you know, and until those two things mesh, I would say that, you know, it, you're still on the search because you don't want to, trade something which you just don't feel comfortable with, okay? That will never work or, you know, you'll get disassociated with it very quickly. And some of the, you know, the typical questions is that, you know, hey, whatever you're doing now, you know, do you feel stuck in your trade for a long time? So I'll, I'll be very upfront. If you take the flex trade and dream lift to trade, dream lift to trade goes on at 40 DTE. Flex trade goes on anywhere from three to 10 DTE. So Dreamlifter is a much, much more conservative trade, okay? Much less uh, involvement on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas the flex trade is basically, you know, as I would determine it, it's kind of, uh, you know, all hands on deck. I mean, you basically have to be at the trade, even though we only do typically have an adjustment at, you know, normally just once a day, some days none, very unusual if there may be two, okay? Um, the only reason for two adjustments is you usually, uh, just what happened the other day is that, you know, we got in early in the day and by the end of the day, the market had moved so much that we had to make a, just a small adjustment. So those are things that you'd have to take a look at uh, from your own perspective of determining, you know, what, what really fits with you or as I offer here in this Dreamlifter flex trade service is both, um, you get all you get both a conservative trade and an aggressive trade all for uh, the same uh, trade alert service so i do have it combined okay and you know some of the other questions you know do you have the ability to change tactics during your trade uh, what i really mean by that is so many times over the past 13 years that i've been trading you know you get a trade and you put it on and dreamlifter is not um, different from this perspective where you, know, you basically get your tactics set up and you get it set for, you know, you know, 20, 30, 40 days. Um, with the flex trade, not at all. Um, this is true to its name of being flex or flexible. Um, we have the ability and I have the ability to go and look at my trade and literally on a day by day basis, we could in fact, from the start of the entry, through seeing what the market is doing, we have the ability to literally turn on a dime. And sometimes we could be in a trade for just a day and decide that, okay, it's not, the market has changed substantially, it's just time to get out, okay? So it's a very, very dynamic trade. It is my um, primary trade that I do for, for myself. Um, so from that standpoint, it's a, um, 
it's something to be able to be to have a good understanding of what you know I'm doing kind of on a on a day to day basis. So, um, and then also is that you know is this potential trade is it is it worth your investment? Okay, and so from that standpoint, you know you really have to take a look at the returns and stuff like that. And you know I'll share some of that information as we go on. And do you also have the ability to assess your risk daily? Not only is, is it do you have the time available. Um, I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day who lives in the Far East and, you know, flex trade, it was really impossible for him uh, because, you know, he's, you know, living in the area where, you know, at, um, you know, you know, normal Eastern Standard Time at 930 in the morning for, for uh, the market opening, you know, it's almost time for folks in that area to be going to bed. So uh, it's a, it's a really tough one, to be honest with you, for, for people that, part of the world, unless you're going to be, um, you know, wanting to get up at all hours of the day. So even though it doesn't have that many, um, you know, adjustments and stuff like that, you want to have the ability to, to, to be there. Okay. So, okay. So what is this thing? What is this flex trade in basic terminology? I'm saying here, we've got the ability every day to change tactics with whatever the market conditions are, are going on. Um, typically the days of entry, are usually anywhere from starting at um, as close as three days, more typical is probably four days. So what I'm talking is about is usually starting it on a Monday and taking it off on, you know, usually on a Thursday or maybe Friday if it if the market has moved to such that it makes it comfortable to get into expiration, okay? Um, it, we do have the ability to stay out if market conditions dictate such action. And I, one of the key things on this trade is that since you're only in it for only a, let's say, typically, let's say a Monday to a Thursday or Monday to a Friday, you know, classically, unless we we start the trade and it's like 10 DTE or nine or eight or something where you would have the normal weekend to go over, most of the time, I would say, um, or at least more than half of the time, we wouldn't have the risk of over and over the weekend, Okay. So it would be in at the start of the week, end at the uh, at the end of the week, or when it's appropriate, uh, we, because we've either reached our profit level or we've got a problem and we have to get out, um, or the market has changed where we say, okay, this is just you know not good to be in. Okay, some of the rules that I use are partially based on technical analysis as far as specific entry rules. Okay. Um, and I just put here in general, the trade has the ability to earn a very respectable profit percentage. And we do look at every day, we have risk assessments based upon very specific limits that, you know, that I've come up with to try to limit the risk on a, on a daily basis, which would then be able to hold on to the profit over, over the long term. So we say, okay, great. Uh, how is this thing done? Okay, so what I did is I looked at the actual trades here. So this is the actual graph uh, from when we started back in November, I think November 30th, which as you can see down the bottom right, says 12, 2020. Uh, I think it's literally started the last day of November uh, to current, which I basically made this chart just uh, about a week or so ago. Um, and what I showed here was the, you know, the capital appreciation of, of the trades. There were a total of 38 trades. So if you take in general, we started off, I just put it here at zero. And obviously you have to have money in your account to start. But the way that, you know, this, this showed it is that we just started at zero. And basically we've gone from zero to basically we've made about $3,200 um, over the term of 38 trades, okay? And we've had about 26 winners, 12 losers. Uh, looked at the average wins have been about, about $389. Average losses about 577. Um, the largest winners here are about, about 1,100 approximately. And largest loser is what the max loss is, right? About $2,500. And there was one of those. And that's the trade that we're actually going to go over later. Just so that you can see. And you can see the average time in trade, average DIT, you know, a little bit over three for a winner. And it's about the same for a loser. Okay. So one of the, um, and also the, as you see here, any max drawdown was about, about $3,300, okay? And what that represents is not necessarily the trade, but at any time during it, that the, the actual, um, you know, the, the software looks at anything that, you know, is the max drawdown um, any time during the trade. 
So as you see the big, big arrow here, which everybody can see, and I made sure I wanted to show people is saying, okay, what we were looking good, looking good, you know, have, obviously anything, any downturn here is a losing trade, okay? And then here, this was back on February 24th, 25th of, of 2021. Obviously in one day we had, a, that was this large loss rate of the $2,500. That's where it came from, okay? And we will look at that, okay? So I took a look at this and said, okay, I need to, you know, reevaluate what we had done in Flex 1 and 2.0. And after that, I changed my tactics, changed the rules, and I basically transitioned to a Flex 3.0 right around the middle of April of this year. And since then, you know, we've had good performance since then. And what I've done, well, let me just go back. It shows the Flex has been up so overall about 23% since November 30th of 2020, okay? So I call it, you know, respectable, okay? Um, and that includes wins and losses, okay? And so if you, uh, you know, if you project that, which, you know, take that as it may, you know, this is basically about, you know, um, you know, basically three quarters of the year, okay? Basically about nine months. Uh, so, you know, another month, you know, we, we may get up to, you know, maybe close to about 30%. Um, obviously that would be, that's just a projection. Okay. But actual live trade results, this isn't for a complete year, but for nine months. So basically since effectively December 1st or November 30th of 2020 to now, which was right around the beginning of September was about 23%. Okay. If you take a look at flex 1.0 slash 2.0, and the only difference there, just to let you know, is we went from the rut to the SPX. So there wasn't any rules changes per se, it's just that we changed from the index, okay? And the reason for that was just because it looked like the rut was just really um, acting up uh, a lot more than the SPX. The SPX was just a little more stable, okay? So if you take a look at the first uh, 20 trades here, okay? Um, we were still profitable, not much, but still profitable, okay? We had about, about $600 over the first 20 trades, okay? So uh, not a, obviously we were doing well up into this one big day here, okay? So time to change, okay? So after we changed and looked at things a little differently, now since Flex 3.0 started, we've had about 18 trades, earned about $2,400. And this has been doing you know, much, much better since then, okay? The details, yeah, the devil's always in the details, right? So I just went into my uh, O&E and just copied it. And here's the first you know, uh, 20 trades, okay? Um, like I said, about six hundred seven dollars. Uh, our average weekly risk here was about eighteen thousand, and that's uh, just basically if you just add up all of the individual risk on a weekly basis and divide it by twenty, I just came up with an average weekly risk. Uh, average weekly profit, uh, including losses, okay, was just only about thirty bucks, okay. Because remember, we had thirty dollars times twenty is uh, six hundred dollars. So doing the computation, our average weekly profit was you know, about 0.17% or over the 20 trades and a little bit about 3.4, 3.35%, okay? If you take a look at Flex 3.0 from then, from April 20th to current, here's the detail. Um, you can see the uh, red ones here are losses. The green one was the largest win, okay? And you can see here that the, again, in this case, our average weekly risk was about a little bit under 14,000. Our average weekly profit was about $145. Average weekly profit, a little bit over 1%. So 1% times these 18 trades that we did right here, okay, is about 18, a little bit less than 19%, okay? And the worst drawdown was about 5% uh, during this time frame, which was this one right here, uh, the $737, and this is the 5%. So you can see that was the worst one since we traded to Flex 3.0. Okay. So here again, here's some of those summaries. Okay. Since we've been going uh, with Flex 3.0, uh, weekly risk. Again, these are just basically just what I had just told you at the bottom of the other slide. Okay. So what I want to show is from here is saying, hey, let's take a look at a live trade. And this is a trade that did well. Okay. And I went and said, okay, what was the live trade entry looking like back on April 23rd of this year? And if you take a look, so I just kind of put the big white circle here uh, just to kind of show you, here's what basically the SPX was doing on a daily basis, okay? This 
white circle is basically what where the trade was happening, okay? And uh, when we put it on, and then also when we when we took it off, okay? So we're just taking a look at that and saying, okay, I just wanna give you a perspective that we had a big day on the first day where we put it on, and then actually we put it on early in the day. The market did go up during the day. This was a Friday, okay, April 23rd. And then we had Monday, Tuesday, and then we took the trade off on Wednesday. And this is kind of like the ideal environment. Not so much that we had a big up day on Friday, but um, just those nice calm days for three days, okay? As compared to some of these other candles that you can see here that had much larger ranges per day. And you can just take a look, you know, all of these have, you know, big ranges all over the place. But if you happen to just catch it right, okay? Um, you can, and I'll show you what, what can happen, okay? So, We'll go right to an actual trade entry. So this is my actual trade that I put on on April 23rd at 9.20 in the morning. This is uh, Pacific time, just uh, because I'm out here in Washington. So classic entry here is that we had, um, usually what I do here is do a 6.12.6, uh, which is approximately what we're looking for is probably no more than about a 20,000 um, total risk that we'd have in the trade. Sometimes we might go a little bit more. But normally we end up less than that, okay? And a lot of that, you know, depends on also where the market is, okay? Markets in higher volatility, you know, we won't be using as much margin. Lower volatility, we'll be using a little bit higher margin for the same exact trade. So here we're putting this trade on approximately about 50 points away. And you might ask, well, why 50? Well, I've got a slide to show you later, which will show you why. And that's that basically that custom think a swim think script graph um, that was um, uh, produced by actually um, just to let people know as a good friend of mine and is honest on the line here uh, Tim Pearson um, uh, he was able to um, uh, do that for me which I'll show you the results of that so I thanked him for that and so here we are at about 50 points away markets at 4177 we're putting it on with about a 50 point always a 50 point wing to the downside and then the top wing is always based upon uh, where we are, if we're at 10 days DTE, if we're at nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, um, these will all vary. It will also vary. Sometimes I'll put it on at 50. Sometimes I'll put it on at 60 or 65, 70, 75, 80. It all depends. Okay. This is the dynamic part of the trade that I was telling you all about earlier is that you really have to, uh, with the way that I do this, I'm taking so many things into consideration to be able to put our best foot forward in the trade to try to do what? Try to make a, a respectable profit, okay? So this one I put on, I split up the top longs in a fashion to be able to give this kind of trade just at the start, okay? This was at 9.30 in the morning, so it was only three hours, a little bit less than three hours into the session because the session starts here at 6.30. So basically had about 100, close to 200 theta to go in. We do have positive delta. One of the things that I, that I do in this trade, if we enter or start it even earlier, okay, this is at 7 DT, as you can see this one right here. Um, and people might ask, well, why, why did this trade you start on 7 DT? You know, why on a Friday? Is Friday magical or you know, what's going on? Well, it's got a very simple answer. Um, because actually I looked at this and said, hmm, uh, I wonder why I did go on back on the 23rd. And it was very simple. I just went back and looked. And sure enough, my last trade exited on Thursday, April 22nd. So I, it was exited in you know, the last part of the day and basically just let overnight go, let the risk go out, don't have to be in and said, okay, we'll, uh, we'll just jump in on Friday sometime. Okay. So on this particular day, I started early. Okay. And I um, wanted to you know, see how it goes, but I knew that if I started early, I always take a look right around you know, within the last hour of the day to see if we need to do any fine tuning, okay? So here we are at about 12, well, exactly 12.30, still Friday 20, the 23rd, okay? Now in this case, the market, as it says here, you know, the market went up. The market went up uh, quite a bit during the day, okay? Which basically was fantastic since we had eight positive delta. Well, I wasn't, that's, that's unusual, okay? But if it happens, well, that's great. 
Okay. I mean, you, you take it and then like, and see by the end of the day, I was already up a little bit, a little bit of money here, about $185 up over 1.4%. So on a weekly basis, uh, on average, if you think about all the wins and losses, you know, we're already above our p &L percentage just within the day. Okay. Um, Cause remember our average was about $145 during this time frame. Okay. But remember that includes losses. So you have to try to shoot for something bigger than that to compensate for some of those losses. So I looked at this here and said, okay, uh, going into the weekend, um, I didn't need to do any, um, uh, any changes. Okay. And what I would do is then look then on Monday and say, okay, look, may look at the graph over here, the risk profile, and notice that this looks a little unusual compared to this graph, because here you see the expiration graph, okay? So uh, what I did here is I basically just, inside of the graph here, I did a little, uh, you know, right click and just said, hide the ex, uh, expiration line. Sometimes it's helpful just because you're able to see and zoom in better on your actual trade here, okay? So, it is, so it's, it's strictly just a visual thing, okay? Sometimes I go back and forth because over the years, I'm just so used to looking at that expiration line. So uh, sometimes this, you know, feel, it feels a bit uncomfortable not seeing that. So I kind of go back and forth. But basically what I do is I look here and I look at end of the day. Well, this is about 1130. So it's, you know, just looking to see what potentially can be done. And what I'll always do is I'll look at saying, okay, here's what's happened during the day. Uh, we earned good theta, which was over the weekend and on during the day on Monday. So in this case, we're up $500. Now remember, take a look at what the high and the low of what the day was, 41.84, 41.94. It was only a 10 point range. Very, very nice. You know, when you get a, this kind of a trade, you only got a 10 point range for the day. Uh, you know, you're going to have a good day. Okay. So during the day, if you remember, uh, I haven't done any modifications to this trade. The key thing is, remember we had, if you looked in here, I'll just go back. So you had to notice the Delta here is plus two. Okay. And we're at 41.92. And then we take a look at here on Monday, where it's also 41.91.78. So effectively at 41.92. Okay. But now the Delta is minus eight. So you can see that when you're only with just a few days left to go to expiration, the Delta has changed quickly. But also, you know, and theta comes in quickly too. Okay. So remember, this is an aggressive trade. It's something where pretty much, pretty much every day, uh, you know, you need to do something. Okay. So in this particular case, um, I kind of go through a process. Okay. Which, you know, I go over with people every uh, Tuesday during our, our webinar sessions. Okay. Which are, I think have been very instructive for people. Um, it's, it's turned out to be more than a, I would say a trade alert service, but a little bit more educational, which some people tell me that I probably do too much to tell people what's going on, but um, it's, that's just uh, the way I do things. So, you know, be that as it may. So I take a look at here and say, okay, what if any risk can I go and potentially go and add in here to potentially get my T plus one line or T plus zero line up a little bit. So you can see on the graph here, the blue line is if I did nothing. The green line is if I end up doing a slight adjustment here to, to uh, put a little bit more credit into the trade. So as you can see over here, the blue line will go up to the green line uh, to the tune of, you can see it down here, it says about uh, $621 with this, with this adjustment, okay? So the green line here, is at about $621 if in fact we have a big up move and we just go up there. So what I like to do is try to reduce the risk uh, completely to the upside first. Second, I like to be able to go and increase this so that if the market does go up, the worst case we can do is basically where this line is, okay? So I took a look at this, and I'm, but I'm also saying, okay, if you make this modification, if you're getting something better on the upside, it's kind of like a seesaw. If you're getting something better on the upside, guess what? You're gonna have to pay for it on the downside. Well, how does that, what do you mean? Well, you gotta pay for it because if you see the blue line risk where we cross, I would say the X axis is down here. Can't show you exactly where the number is, but you can see it's here. The green line is here. So as you can see, as you raise the green line up here, this will increase 
the risk to the downside. Notice the slope on this green line is much more than the slope on this blue line, okay? So you're going to be able to, um, if we have a move down, we're gonna get hurt more or quicker to the downside with this, with this adjustment versus not doing the adjustment, okay? So this is always the, the give and take, okay? And so I've set up different rules and different criteria, which you know I tell people on Tuesdays what, they, what those are, and we make adjustments, okay? More often than not, uh, this adjustment will be made during, like I said, during the last hour of the day. And then we go on to the next day. Okay, we made an adjustment and now I'm looking at the following day. So here, here we are at Tuesday and this time we're at 1220 in the day. We're up around $700, which is really, really great. Okay, remember this is a, a good trade. Okay, the market is really behaving for us. Notice the low and the high of the day, 4176, 4192, only about 16 points. So, you know, fantastic, okay? Because it's ideal scenarios, okay? Um, so when you have those and the market is really behaving for you, say, okay, well, I keep rolling to a risk assessment to the downside um, to be able to look at that, okay? And in this case, I made a little bit of an adjustment here, rolling a few longs down, okay? And again, I've got rules to associate with how much and what the credit is and all those kind of things associated with how much risk I want to take to the downside, knowing that remember aggressive trade, if the market really moves against us, um, you know, 40 to 50 points or so, we could lose all of this profit, okay? Uh, in the following day, okay? So, but we always want to be able to see if um, my number of about 50 points to the downside is the number that I always kind of look at. And I'll show you why a little bit later, okay? So we look at the following day, very early in the morning, only about an hour into the session. Uh, the market was up about five points or so. Um, came right up to our line here. We're up a little bit over about five and a half percent. We have about close to $18,000 in the trade. We're up about $982, about five and a half percent. And this is one of the trades that's saying, hey, this is fantastic, worked great. Um, do we go and do anything further from this? Okay, so this is, the decision at this point is to say, my decision was to get out. Here we're at Wednesday at 7.30. Could we go and um, make some other modifications, uh, get some more credit into the trade? And we could do all kinds of different things. So, you know, depending upon different trade structures, you know, like I said, different trade tactics, you are where we are. I am not limiting myself to always just taking these particular strikes and rolling those to a specific thing. We could be putting in credit spreads all over the place, okay? As you would do in many other different trades. And a lot of those things are just things that you learn over the years of trading, okay? Of what you can do and what the, what the pros and the cons are to each one of those kind of adjustments that you could do. Or like I said, get just get the heck out, okay? I looked at this and said, okay, we've been in it for five days days in trade is five. Um, looked at it here Wednesday. We've made a very, very respectable profit and saying, okay, time to get out. And then probably either take the rest of the day off or maybe put something on if I really look at it and I looked at the positions for maybe looking at something uh, for the following Friday. Okay. Um, not two days from then, but, you know, basically, you know, uh, a week from then. Um, and then I would go and go from there. Okay, so let me just stop there for a second to see if there's any questions. Tom, you got any questions? Sorry, I was muted. Um, let's see, uh, Alan asks, are these results from one contract? It looks like a three by three or three by six. By it's, three. A, it's a it's a six twelve six. Six twelve six. Okay, which is approximately. So what we're seeing on the screen right now is a six twelve six with the top. Uh, split and the margin is about 18,000. So it's not, uh, these results are just uh, for a lot size of, for a, a butterfly that's a 6126 butterfly. But you could do this and people do trade this smaller, okay? So it literally, I've traded this with just a one lot, okay? And, and actually it's kind of raise a good question um, I've had weeks where I was very, very nervous about what was going on with the market. And I said, hey, we'll put something on, but I just, I'm not willing to put $18,000 or 20,000 worth of 
capital out there. So sometimes I just put one. I had a one, two, one. Okay. And then Andre says service is great educational possibility. Dave helps with any related questions, holds uh, nothing behind. The only thing I would appreciate is more clear set of rules for entry, mostly used adjustments and exits. Mm -hmm. so I guess yeah, you like some more rules, but it's very yeah, flexible. And it's, we, <laughs> and Andre and I always talk about that. It's a, um, it, you know, it's a, with this thing being so constantly moving, uh, to write the book on that would be um, pretty, pretty tough. So that's why it's a, um, um, you know, that's, you know, like I said, I, I guess I, I don't really leave too much uh, behind. So that's why I just try to keep people abreast of what's happening. So oh, and Kevin had a question when he closed the trade with split strike contracts is the closing difficult. And hi, Kevin, haven't seen you in a long time. So welcome back. Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, it's very simple. And basically you just have to do, you know, two butterflies. Uh, so let me just go back for a second. So in this case, I would do a one, two, one, okay, butterfly, and then I would do a five, ten, five, okay, and that would be the um, that would be the easy way to, to to close it, okay. So, and I would put both of those, you know, sometimes depending upon if I have those two two butterflies out there, depending upon what the market is doing at that very very moment, I will go and. If one is, looks like, it, you know, it depends on how quickly I want to get out. Um, but, you know, sometimes if the market is moving and, you know, typically these will have, one will have positive delta, the other one might have negative delta. So sometimes one will get filled uh, quicker than the other. Um, but uh, I've had no issues with, with getting out from that standpoint, it's just, just two different, two different butterflies, which is very typical as a matter of fact of how we would put the trade on. So at entry, many times there would be, uh, rarely it's a six twelve six. It's always like a here, like it would be split five and one, or four and two, or three and three, or you know two four one five, you know, or so you got those six. I guess that's maybe six combinations of what the upper uh, longs would be at. Uh, sometimes it's at just a simple six twelve six. Um, but then most of the time I'd say it's probably split up. So we're very used to just kind of putting on two, two butterflies at a time. Okay. Okay. And Andre says, uh, the book would be great. Dave, uh, these trades in the bushes of the market. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the questions so far. Okay. So now that we've seen, you know, one of those, you know, okay, great, you know, life is fantastic, you know, you know, let's take a look at what happens when things, you know, happen the other way. Okay. So here's a situation, okay, back on February 24th, okay, and we all probably know what's going to happen to this trade, but I, you know, put a question up here to folks and I said, okay, how does this look to you? You know, here we are at trade entry, okay, and we're sitting here at about, 127 points away, okay? So this is obviously at a time when I was very, very uh, nervous about the trade and we put this on. In this particular case, uh, this was a Wednesday and this is unusual because this was one of the changes we made going from flex one slash 2.0 to flex 3.0 is that we do not put trades on on a Wednesday anymore that are due only two days later. Okay, so that is one of the things that we, I guess, cut back a little bit on the aggressiveness, but it came because of re reacting to and learning of what can happen with these trades that are, can be very, very volatile if in fact you get a significant change in the market, okay? So when you take a look at this trade, it's like, okay, we're sitting way out here, you know, 127 points away from the shorts. My gosh, I mean, I would expect that people would look at this and say, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty safe. I mean, you're way the heck out there. Okay. And it's costing you know, close to $20,000 in margin to have this ability to earn just a little bit of theta. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Okay. So remember we're here at 3927. So let's take a look, take a look at the next day. This is 630 in the morning. So right at market open and we're down about five points. We're at 3920. Okay. So but hey, we're up a few bucks. So fantastic. You know, we're up $97. Okay. Okay. 
let's take a look at the train. The train. And I'm, I put a note up here and I said, okay, everybody, what is different than the prior day? Okay. And Tom, I'd love to see if any chat things come in that people want to offer. If you take a look at it, I can go back and you say, okay, take a look at this trade here. And if I was to give you a little bit of a hint, take a look at this 3850 on this slide and take a look at where 3850 is on this slide. Okay. You know, what is the difference? What happened? No, no takers yet. Okay. So, you know, this is kind of like the, uh, the game show. Okay. You know, what, what's, or like the matching game, you know, what's different than the last, right? <laughs> what you can see here. Okay. Oh, we got one person coming in. Oh, a few people. Vol increase and rolled back. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what you see here is the T plus zero line significantly uh, down compared to here. Uh, here, I'm trying to go back here. I'm trying to go back to the last slide. Mm. Can you use your left and right arrow? That's what I was doing, but oh, there we go. Okay, something was locked up there for a second. So you can see here, 3850 is right up at the x-axis. You know, no problem at all, okay? Take a look at it here. You're down quite a bit. It doesn't look like a lot, but if you look at, you know, the graduations here are, are quite large. So, you know, that's probably down about, you know, $1,000 or something at 3850. But okay, but we're sitting up here, okay? Well, gee, can something kind of, you know, interesting happening? Uh, does everything happen overnight? You know, is everything, you know, that we get to be concerned with is just an overnight gap? No, things happen during the day, okay? What happened? Okay, so what I did here is I took a look at the VIX on the 24th and the 25th. So these over here, as you can see here, this is the 24th when market was um, uh, the day that was on entry. And you can see the VIX of where it was. You know, it's right around between around 24 to 22 or so. And it was coming down right at the end of the day. It's you know below 22. Then you see overnight and then at market open, it's right down here. Okay. But then look what happened. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. You know, this is all during the day. So it went from like less than 22 to over like about 31 at one point during the day. So I think percentage wise, that's, uh, you know, what, over 40%? Uh, a huge move. Okay. I mean, that's unbelievable. Okay. And the result of that, yeah, three hours later, it's from 6 30. Here we are at 10 o'clock in the morning we've got max loss. We're down over our max loss of $2,500. We went right down to here. The market just went, just zoomed down and very quickly, you know, it was down 89 points in just a matter of a couple hours with associated um, uh, volat volatility, okay? And notice that where we are here, if you were to go back, so it's basically right here at 3836, we're down $2,700. If you go back uh, to the slide that was here at about 38, 36 is, you know, right around here, you're down a little bit, but hardly anything. Okay. Maybe it's probably a few hundred dollars. Okay. If we had gone down to 38, 36 here. Okay. But you take a look at here. Now we're down here. So you know that unfortunately, you know, people will take a look at that and say, yeah, but that's just due to volatility. Yeah. But. I've got a hard line in the sand that if we go beyond $2,500, that's it. I don't care if it's volatility or not. Um, you know, that's it. If, it if, if the unfortunate thing happens, we're gonna take the loss and we wanna make sure that we don't go down even further, which as you can see by some of the day, there were some marks down here even lower during the day. So, you know, so we did get out at, at max loss, okay? But I don't, as a matter of fact, I think, Tim and I were talking about this yesterday and we we're saying, okay, well, what can you, what can you do to present, to prevent this, Dave? You know, what, what could you have done? Okay. Well, the nice thing is if we were just not in the trade, A, okay. That would have been a nice way to avoid it. Uh, B, not have a max loss, which some people don't do, okay. Is not have a max loss and say, well, this is just due to volatility. Let's hang around and maybe this will come back. 
Okay. Well, okay. Uh, depending upon the size of your trade, what your personal rules are that you've set up, then you may take a look at that. Okay. But, you know, that is something that you have to, you know, that's it all depends on your trade plan. Okay. Uh, what mine is, is what I use. Okay. And that's what has worked for me. Uh, so I want to be able to live to trade another day. Okay. I don't want to be in Hopeville to be able to say, okay, I'm hoping that the next day that this thing is going to come back and everything will be fine and I'll be able to expire this trade and we'll make some money. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, you can live in that world, but I've seen way too many times where do, sometimes does that happen and you get a big V in the market and maybe this is the bottom of the V or maybe it's not. And maybe tomorrow we're going to end up down here and now all of a sudden you're at two, three X, four X, your max loss. You know, I, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm losing and I'm, you know, if I lose, I want to see if I can do it so that I'm only, um, I want to try to prevent this as much as possible. But sometimes, you know, the market will do what it will want to do with you and, and you don't have any choice. Okay. So for me, this is not my typical loss. As you can see, the average loss for those trades has been, you know, right around, um, I think back earlier, we said well, right around $400 or so. But, you know, on occasion, this is why I personally set up a, a loss without volatility of about $1,000. Because I know that if sometimes if we go down 1,000, if volatility has an impact, it could make, it could bring us down to this level. Okay. So, like I said, I do have rules set in there to be able to take care of that. Okay. So, how did I come up with, let's see, I see a, a note in here. Oh, Andre says, uh, would you re-enter the trade at this high vol trade with uh, new parameters? With the new, so would you re-enter the trade? So Andre, I would not re-enter the trade at this high vol with the new parameters, meaning, uh, in other words, would I get into a flex 3.0 at this point? Okay, I'd have to take a look at it. If I go back to February 25th or 26th, I would have to take a look at it. I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I, I do not know. I didn't look at if I would have gone back in with the new parameters because we didn't have those back in the end of February. Um, but uh, maybe we can talk, maybe we can take a look at that next Tuesday, Andre. So one of the things, and this is this cool thinkorswim, think script custom graph that, um, that I've got. And basically what it shows here was basically from the start of, um, this is a basically a, da a daily look at as it says here from open, it's basically got the opening mark of the day to the low of the day uh, for the SPX on a daily basis. And this is for Flex 3.0 um, during the time frame of when we started here around April, right around mid-April to current, which was right around the beginning of September, okay? So as you can see, the line that I've drawn in here is right at about 50, okay? Now, do we have times that we go beyond 50? Yes, okay, have we done that? Yes, okay. And, but do we have times, and I just put some circles in here of times when we were, I think, at least beyond 40, okay? And, you know, so we do have some occurrences, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 occurrences during the four and a half months of when we've had a daily shift in the market from during the individual day of a range from the open to the low of the day. That doesn't necessarily mean where we close for the day, but where we opened and then where we had a significant downturn during the day, okay? So I took a look at this. And also when I started this, I looked at this in a much larger time frame over like the last 10 years and said, okay, let's draw a line someplace on here so that we can go and say, most cases in a good percentage of the time, are we gonna be pretty safe at about a 50 point daily uh, transition level, okay? And this is how I chose 50, because it's not just based on here, but if you take a look at this and go back over many, many years, you can see that recently, we've been certainly more volatile than in the past, okay? But, um, you know, this is one of the things which really helped me look at this, and I go and I, I share this with people during the sessions on Tuesday, and we've looked at this in trade design and looking back at it over many years. So uh, that's it's really kind of a cool thing to do. And again, I thank Tim for uh, doing the the uh, script for me there. 
So that's another kind of a, uh, another script that was actually written by somebody else within Aeromare is this Contango. And this is basically something also on Thinkorswim. And this just gives a kind of an idea as one of the, um, one of the uh, technical analysis rules that I use is basically the VIX term structure. And so I just took, took a look at the Contango details or the VIX term structure from about uh, September of 2020 to September of uh, this year. As you can see, everything above zero or this yellow line here is officially in Contango. I've got another line drawn in here. Three is just another line that I use. But as you can see, there's only basically a couple of times during the year that we have been in backwardation, okay? And even then, it's only been just for a few days, okay? Most of the year, okay, we've been in Contango. So I do have a different rule set for Contango, but we haven't had to really deal with that, okay? But just so you know that I do this, and this is one of my evaluation tools that I use, okay? So that's about it. I just wanted to thank you for your interest in the, I say here, the Flex Trade Alert Service, but it's also a combination of the Flex and Dreamlifter, okay? And this is a uh, something that I've, like I said, I've had, had this been going on for now for about close to about maybe a year and a quarter. Uh, Flex has only been around for about nine months. And I guess at this point, um, that's pretty much all I had on the presentation. And I know people have had some good, good comments um, about what's been, uh, about what's been going on here. And I'd say um, that's all I've got to offer for the presentation. If people want to, um, Tom, I don't know if you can come on and tell people yeah, about what it, what it is as far as if people wanted to, um, you know, I'm never one to try to push people signing up, but, um, you know, this is a chance to kind of have a chance to see what it's been like. And I know we do for any new people joining in, um, there's always the first month is half off. Um, so, um, you know, for people that would like to do that, that's fantastic. Or if you'd like to join in, I see some people in the chat here, some old friends. Hi, Susan, how are you? Um, so thanks for, thanks for coming in and joining. And, um, you know, I think we, one of the key things that I'll just add to this is with the, with the flex service, it's one of the things that over the 13 years that I've been trading, one of the things that I always found a bit frustrating over the years is to have a trade that you're doing and then be able to um, see other people that are doing it, but not having any, you would only hear maybe a week or two or three or four after the trade was done saying, well, here's what you know could have been done, okay? And I think it's really nice to be able to have something where uh, we've got, I've got trades going on both in the Dreamlifter and the Flex where you're seeing things on a daily basis where if we have to do something, so it's, it's very dynamic, it's trading, and seeing what I'm doing on a daily basis. And these are the trades that, you know, I've, like I said, these are a combination of things that I've learned over the years from uh, things I've done independently, things I've learned from many other people, you know, that I've crossed paths with over the years. So as you can imagine, you know, you know, the key thing that I've always professed is take some sort of a, um, um, you know, a rule set, go in and back trade it. And the difficult part with, uh, that's easy to do with the dream lifter, but with the flex trade, it's way more dynamic. And because of that, um, even though everybody was kind of looking for, you know, kind of the book of rules for the flex, it's a difficult one. I'll be honest with you. And it's not because I don't want to share stuff because people know that are in the service that I do share pretty much everything on all of our Tuesday sessions. So because of that, um, I would, you know, enjoy people to come on board uh, to be able to join in. Uh, we've had, you know, good success especially since the start of Flex 3.0. Uh, some of the rule sets that we've been putting in have been able to really take care of uh, some of the, I guess, inadequacies of the, of the first version. And so we've have been having much more success with that since then. And, um, you know, I would say uh, if it's something that you just want to, there's no long-term commitment, if you want to just try it for a month and see how it goes, that's great. If not, that's fine too. And, you know, we'll just, I, I'll, uh, I'll keep doing this until there's uh, some interest in it. So, um, uh, but it is the things that I do on a daily basis with my own personal trading. And it's the, I guess it's the uh, entry point for people to come in to be able to see, you know, what I've just, you know, gained in knowledge over the years and try to put it into something where, you know, I can make money because it is my, my main source of, or only source of income. 
uh, is is my trading. So uh, anyway, I if that's if there's nothing else, then uh, well, I put uh, the links uh, in the chat. It's airmirror.com slash dreamlifter or slash flex. Now I'll probably combine those into one page because uh, the flex was kind of experimental, but now it's more established. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll just combine them and you know one if you go to either one of those pages in order, you get both of them. So okay, uh, yeah, well we'll just make it more clear. So one they, they, it includes both. Okay, and, great. And I think the first month is half price if I remember. So yes, yes, and for any new people coming in, yeah. So that uh, lowers your barrier to entry. So. <laughs> Your, it lowers yeah. your risk. <laughs> Absolutely. And like I said, um, I, I've been, I, I really enjoy doing this because it's just, it gives me the ability to be able to, um, you know, just share what I'm doing and we'll just uh, kind of keep doing it until, uh, like I said, until there's uh, uh, still some interest and, uh, uh, or maybe at that time people have, uh, as some people have told me, well, I've, I've, I've learned everything I need now. They can do it on their own, which is, I guess that's a, a compliment as well. So uh, we'll, we'll take both. And also as an aside, uh, Dave does mentoring too. So if you're interested in some personalized one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Dave can do that as well. So that's a nice option if you need it. Yeah, I did it for about six years with John Locke and his organization. And so, you know, all the trades that are within, you know, basically everything that I learned, which was pretty much, you know, starting off, as you said, back, Dan, back with, uh, you know, Dan Sheridan and, you know, having Dan Harvey as my mentor, you know, gosh, close to 13, 12, 13 years ago um, with those trades and things that I learned through with John Locke and then went off on my own. So, you know, all of those things I've taught over the years and, you know, those are, um, you know, those are all things that I'm very familiar with. So, uh, uh, but, you know, obviously the, the, you know, for people that are, you know, looking for personal mentoring, some people come in and get personal mentoring recently that have actually, some of it is about trades, but some people are looking for just overall, you know, how they're trying to get into retirement and, uh, using this as kind of a way to kind of uh, backfill some uh, need for, you know, for some uh, money during retirement. So, you know, I've worked with many people on reducing their workload and, you know, augmenting it with some trading and, um, and even some, you know, doctors have done that to be able to go and, you know, reduce the amount of days that they're having to be at their practice and, and do a little bit of trading while they kind of go into retirement. So it's, uh, it's been, a, it's been great for me to be able to help people do that over the years. And uh, so it's, it's, that's a lot of fun for me. Andy can even help him pick out a nice bottle of wine. Uh, well, that's always, that's the easy one. There's no, ch <laughs> no charge for that. <laughs> and people, people don't know that I'm actually a, a certified sommelier that I've got over the years of working in the wine business. So uh, yeah, there's always, there's always wine to drink over here, Tom. You know, you know the, 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 the wine fridge is always open when you want to come visit. There we go. All right. So Dave, Tim, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. looks like the flex, like I said, has kind of reached maturity and ready for its own liftoff. So very uh, good. clear for takeoff and ready to go. So <laughs> thanks so All much, right. Tom. Thanks everyone. I'll get this recording posted as soon as I can and uh, have a great one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>